Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ryan from O2BT here with another video in our technical interview prep series. Today we're going to be talking about the question, write a function that tells whether or not two strings are anagrams. For this, you'll need basic knowledge of arrays and strings. Alright, let's get started. So here we have the framework of our uh, main program here. Um, we just declared two strings that are inputted by the user and it'll call a function called isAnagram and it'll tell you if they are anagrams or are not anagrams and it is our job to implement this function here. So it's going to return true if and only if S1 and S2 are anagrams. Um, otherwise it's going to return false. So let's talk a little bit about the methodology we want to use here. Um, there is an O of N squared method which simply iterates through each string and tries to find that character and the other string but that is not what we want. Instead we want an O of N algorithm which we can get and that's good. So let's talk a little bit about the process that we're going to use. Um, we will have an array here and we'll call it all chars and we'll make it be 256 uh, characters in length, or 256 elements rather and um, those will all be initialized to zero. We can iterate through S1 and each time we see a character in S1 we can increment uh, the entry in all chars whose index is given by the ASCII value of that character. We can do the same thing for S2 but decrement the entry in the array and at the end if the strings are anagrams um, every entry in this all chars array should be zero. And if that was a little quick, you'll, you'll see this come together uh, in just a sec. So let's iterate through um, the first array. So we'll say for n i equals 0, i less than s1 dot length. We're just going to use the length function from the string library, i plus plus. And now what do we want to do? Well, we want all chars of s1 of i to be incremented. And so the syntax might look a little funky, but what it's saying is take this character in S1 that we're looking at and use its ASCII value to index an element in this array all chars. Because remember, a character is just a value between 0 and 256, hence why we have this length here of 256. And we're just taking that entry in the array and incrementing it. Um, and so we're going to do that for the whole string. And now we're going to iterate uh, through the second string, but we're going to do something a little bit different. So let's iterate through the second string, again using this length function that's found in the string library. Um, and now here what we want to do is we want all chars S2 of J to be decremented. And the idea here is that for every time we see a character in S1, we want to see the same character in S2. So now after we've iterated and either incremented or decremented the entry in the array, um, all chars should be all zeros if the strings are anagrams of one another. Otherwise, it'll have a non-zero entry in it if the strings aren't anagrams of one another. So we're going to want to iterate through this all chars array, and we're going to want to see if um, any of the entries are non-zero. So if all chars of k is not zero, we'll return false. Otherwise, if we do that, we know that we've seen all zeros in this all chars array, so these strings are indeed anagrams, so we'll return true. And there you have it. So right now we're going to see if uh, this code compiles and we'll run it through some test cases. So. We'll go to G++. Great, everything works. Um, so now let's try this out. So input two strings. We'll start off with two strings that are anagrams. So how about cat and act? Cat and act are anagrams. Perfect. Um, we'll try it again. How about rats and star? Those are anagrams as well. Let's try it with things that aren't anagrams. How about uh, then and there. And it'll tell us that then and there are not anagrams. All right, there you have it. There's a simple way to check whether or not two strings are algorithms. Again, note 
that this runtime is O of N instead of O of N squared. So this is a, a huge advantage over um, this sort of naive method of solving this problem. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and see you in the next video.